WBEZ app. Sixteen million more shoppers to shop in this weekend. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Total Wine and More, where shoppers can find a great Cabernet, bourbon, or sparkling wine for everyone on their list this holiday season. Total Wine and More. Drink responsibly. B21. From Marketplace, I'm Sabri Beneshore, in for David Brancaccio. This holiday weekend, more than 180 million people are expected to go shopping, either in-store or online. That is according to the National Retail Federation, which says that is almost 16 million more shoppers than last year. For retailers, some, some of the big questions are, who is spending and on what? Marketplace's Kimberly Adams reports on how the different generations are spending. Baby boomers control about half the wealth in this economy. So it makes sense that when it comes to holiday spending. You're going to see boomers using their buying power to really provide experiences, not just for themselves, but for the younger generation. Greg Portell is a lead partner at the consulting firm Carney. So you're going to see a lot of family gifting, a lot of family experiences, which should both expand the holiday shopping season, but also add a little depth to people's holiday spirit. At the same time, older shoppers may feel a bit more sticker shock than others. Lars Perner, a boomer himself who teaches clinical marketing at USC's Marshall School of Business, says older people... Spend a lot more time looking at lower prices throughout their lives, so inflation is likely to be more unnerving and a disincentive to buying. For other groups, accepting higher prices isn't as big a deal as paying them. Candace Corlett is president of WSL Strategic Retail. Some of the biggest spenders on gifts are millennials and Gen Z, and they're the biggest entertainers, and they have college loans to repay that kicked in in October. So the timing is dreadful for the holiday season. So we're entering a holiday shopping season where, according to McKinsey and Company, some shoppers will trade down for fewer or less expensive goods and services, while others will go in the opposite direction. Tamara Charm is a partner at McKinsey and Company. Especially among younger, high-income consumers, we see that a lot of them want to splurge as well. It's been a really tough couple of years, and I want something that feels more immediate and something that's going to make me feel good in the moment. Even if it might be tough to pay for later. In Washington, I'm Kimberly Adams for Marketplace. So more people are going to be doing some holiday shopping this weekend, but the next big question is how much are they going to spend? Because The economy is slowing down a little. The prediction from the National Retail Federation is that sales will increase but not by much. The slowest pace in five years. Inflation's been sapping our spending power, and a lot of people are just doing their holiday shopping earlier. Ted Brosman is a senior analyst with Bankrate. I think holiday sales will be okay this year. Now, the National Retail Federation's projecting a 3 or 4% rise from last year, which more or less matches the inflation rate. I wouldn't be surprised if sales growth comes in a little lower than that, but you know, that said, it's not going to be a disaster. It's not going to be a blockbuster either. One other thing that might be keeping that spending in check, about 25% of shoppers are still paying off holiday debt from last year. That's according to Wallet Hub. With that, let's do the numbers. The FTSE in London is down almost three-tenths percent. S&P futures are flat. Dow futures are up a tenth of a percent. That's 40 points. NASDAQ futures down a tenth of a percent. And the yield on the 10-year Treasury is 4.480%. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Palo Alto Networks. Palo Alto Networks delivers what's next in cybersecurity innovation to protect today's digital way of life. Learn more at paloaltonetworks.com. Professional soccer in Saudi Arabia has a lot of cash, and the Saudi Pro League has spent millions of dollars to attract some of the world's best players. Saudi Arabia is also set to be the host of the World Cup in the year 2034. So as the country's role in the world of soccer continues to grow, the BBC's Samir Hashmi took a closer look and filed this report. Neymar! A rapturous welcome for Neymar at his new club, Al-Hilal. Neymar is a mega star player and uh, he will bring a lot of fans for like Al-Hilal. 
A couple of months ago, the top four Saudi football clubs, including Al Hilal, were bought over by the PIF, the Government Controlled Sovereign Wealth Fund. This has enabled Saudi clubs to offer eye-watering salaries to attract some of the top names in football, including Cristiano Ronaldo and Karim Benzema. There has been an influx of foreign players. One of them is Portuguese footballer Ruben Neves, who swapped the English Premier League for the Saudi Pro League and joined Al Hilal. If you see the difference between this league now and a lot of other leagues, is there are not differences. I think people at the beginning, when the team started to, to sign players, the people didn't believe in this project, but I think everyone now is excited to see this league everyone now is wants to see this league sports is one of the main pillars of the country's vision 2030 economic diversification program which aims to reduce saudi arabia's reliance on oil revenues by building new industries and attracting more foreign capital in line with that vision the saudi pro league has spent more than 650 million dollars to sign foreign players some European leagues have criticized the strategy adopted by the SPL, but Chief Operating Officer Carlo Nohra says that they are focusing on making the project financially viable. So we have a commitment to support this for however long it takes to deliver on the objectives of the strategy. However, the responsibility that we have against that commitment is to also take that commercialization element of the strategy and start increasing that so that we can be responsible for our own financial growth in the future and not to be wholly dependent on the government. I'm walking on Tehelia Street, which is located in the heart of Riyadh. Right now, I'm outside a shisha bar, which is packed with people. Most of them are middle-aged men who are smoking shisha and they are hooked onto the screens. The Riyadh's home team, Al Nasser, the club that Cristiano Ronaldo plays for, is in action right now. Saudi Arabia is a football crazy nation with 80% of the population either playing, attending or watching the sport on TV. The kingdom's target is to elevate SPL in the world's top 10 in terms of revenues by 2030. It's still early to judge whether these ball investments would pay off in the long run, but the strategy has demonstrated the Gulf nation's ambition of becoming a major international football hub. In Saudi Arabia, I'm the BBC's Samir Hashmi for Marketplace. And in New York, I'm Sabri Beneshour with the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.